Today we're going to be looking at my two favorite tools, Bubble and Figma, and talk about the process I use when it comes to designing my Bubble pages. I don't do this in Bubble, I do this in Figma, and there are a million reasons why you should be doing the same. We're gonna be talking about things like Bootstrap as well. Um, Bubble, you will see Bootstrap sizing in their responsive editor. That's something we have adopted. That's something we now teach, and that's a method we use or framework we use for designing um, all of our client apps. So let's jump in and have a look. So we currently have a course called FlexCamp. Um, the next cohort actually starts next week, and our students will build this landing page. So we go from wireframe to something a bit more complete, but it's not a design camp, it's flex camp. So it's all about responsive design. And then down to this mobile responsive version down the right hand side. And what we're teaching is the bootstrap breakpoints, bootstrap spacing and bootstrap sizing. Now, I talked about many reasons why you should be designing a Figma. Uh, number one, it's a very, very easy tool Figma. It is fast, it's easy, and it's collaborative. So if you work within a team of bubblers, you obviously need a master copy to be able to work from. You might have two designers that want to work in Bubble. Uh, you might have a technical team that wants to be involved in the UX and design process to say this particular list or group or element may not work technically. Um, and you can feed back within Figma, leave comments. And you can also collaborate directly with clients. You can give them the master copy of what the overall app is gonna look like um, together with some prototypes. And it's, it's much better to complete that process before you even touch Bubble. Also, I love being able to have an infinite canvas. So being able to zoom right out and see the entire, um, the entire pages side by side. It's much easier to display and talk about designs when you can see the whole thing rather than in bubble on a web page scrolling down you know you can't comment in there you can't really collaborate as a team effectively so let's talk through a few things that i love about figma and then we will design just part of this landing page so figma and bubble actually aren't too dissimilar in some of their tools um, so we build if we look at the right hand side we have the width of a frame a frame is basically a page and at Build Camp, we build on a 1400 width uh, canvas, basically. So not, not necessarily the, the page, but the editor sets up at 1400 wide. And then Figma has auto layout. And this is similar to Flex within Bubble. We can see we have gap spacing. If I hover over this 96, that is gap spacing on the page. If you look onto the page in this, where these are pink, well, there's your 96 gap spacing. If I click onto this group, um, let me just move to one of the parent groups. So this left-hand column is basically a group. It would be with the bubble. And I can see we have 24 pixels gap. We have 32 pixels horizontal padding and 63 pixels vertic vertical padding. And we can also set the direction. So columns and rows, very, very, very similar to Bubble, which means that we can actually build a direct replica of this entire design in Bubble with all of the breakpoints that are coherent with Bootstrap spacing. And we'll talk more about Bootstrap when we start building a Bubble. Look at these dashboards. This is what we teach at FlexCamp, building this dashboard and this dashboard breaks down to mobile sizes. And here we can see some horizontal scroll on this repeating group down here. Something we always do at BuildCamp is obviously we set up a style sheet. I mean, this is very, very basic. We go into a lot more detail, something I can demonstrate in another video. But if you are the tech person or you are one of the designers that weren't involved in creating this file, well, you'll go straight to the style sheet and you can set these styles up in Bubble. So here we have a heading one, if we go to the right hand side and I click heading one, which is a style by the way, so I can reuse this heading one anywhere in this project. I can see that heading one is 56 uh, pixels tall. 
Okay, and then I can see other things about it here, like the line height, uh, we have 68. See it's bold, enter, everything I need to know. All right, but let's, um, I'm, I've just set up a blank bubble canvas and I'm going to build basically the nav bar and this hero section. Okay, and this is what it will look like on mobile. Here is one I've already built for the FlexCam cohort. Break down, break further down. You can see stuff starting to happen. Go down to mobile sizes, and there we go. Okay. So let's work on this nav bar at the top. So this is the exact process that I use when I'm working from a Figma file. And I, I built this Figma file, but maybe another designer built a Figma file. And I've worked with some clients in the past who have professional branding companies and marketing companies working with them. They work in Figma. A recent client just went through a brand redesign. Their designer created the Figma file and we rebuilt it in Bubble. And another thing I wanted to say quickly is Bubble has a plugin, um, but the plugin, um, there is a lot of work you would need to do. So first you'll need to understand how to build in Figma so the plugin works because Bubble treats frames as pages, but that's not really how you would work within Figma with designers. You would have many frames uh, per screen. So that's not something that we used. I have tried it. Uh, it's actually more work to try to reconfigure everything to get it to work in Bubble. It's actually easier to understand the process of going from a Figma file to Bubble. It is very fast. So the first thing we're going to look at here is um, I can see on the right hand side I have a max width of 1200. Okay, I can see it's 80 pixels tall. That's all I need to know for now. So I'm going to go create a reusable element that's going to be a floating group and it's going to be 80 pixels tall. So navbar. Bring up the inspector. I'm going to make this a floating group. And on the layout tab, I'm going to choose row. And then the width for the UI builder. So this needs to match the page, that's 1400. But we will have an internal group with a max width of 1200 just to keep the nav bar options, um, such as uh, you know the three columns, to keep them slightly constrained. I wouldn't want them to go edge to edge on a massive screen. And then the height's going to be 80. Okay. So back on the appearance, I'm, I wouldn't have, um, actually, I can just leave this as flat color. Let's grab a group and I'm going to draw the group in the middle. And this will be called group inner. So that would be the group inner container. This is going to be set to row as well. Put that in the center and vertically align this in the center as well. No fixed width, but a max width of 1200. No min width. And the min height is going to be 80. Okay. Um, let's get this guy in the center. So I'm just clicking back on the reusable element and we've got row selected and now I can just put it in the center. There it is there. Now I'm just going to detach the style because I'm going to set up a, basically a wireframe group that I can see nested groups. So I'm going to choose flat color and let's actually just go to this Figma file and just copy. This is what it's going to look like basically initially, initially. So this is the primary color I've used. Grab it from Figma, Figma being the master design, uh, the master copy. And I'm going to set a, on this group here, I'm just going to set that color. And then I need an opacity of 10%. Perfect. And now I can create a new style called wireframe. And later on when everything is in place, because this is more about layout, not design, but when everything is in place, I just change the styling of wireframe and then change the name of it. So the styling would be transparent or white, basically. All right, let's talk about bootstrap. So bootstrap spacing, you probably, a lot of you are familiar with um, 16, well, 12, 16, 24, 32, 48, 64, 72, 96. Maybe you've heard of it, maybe you haven't. But if you go to getbootstrap.com, 
you can see a list uh, of bootstrap sizes basically. So I'm going to choose, I'm going to have padding initially 32 and 32. And then I'm going to use a conditional to change mobile sizes, the padding down to 16 and 16. This is just industry standard stuff. Okay, but I'll come back to mobile. Okay, so that solves that problem. Let's, um, let's now, just want to get this on the page. So I'm going to go back to index and I'm going to grab the nav bar and just drop it on the page. Speaking of the page, let's just change the, let's change the page to column and the width for the UI builder to 1400. And I'm just going to make this a square. So 1400 by 1400. And if I preview that, just remove the debugger bar. Yeah, perfect. So my nav bar will be going edge to edge, but the center group is now constrained by 1200. So that really helps. It means that I'm on, this screen is currently 1800 uh, pixels wide, and I don't want to have to, if I've got centered content, move my mouse all the way to the right hand side to click on my avatar or log in or sign up. And you know, it's just a long way to travel using your mouse. So you always want to set a max width on your nav bar. Right, okay, so let's jump back in. Now, simply, if I look at Figma, I have three columns. So I'm just gonna grab a group, drop it in with no max width, let it grow as much as I want, and then I'm gonna copy and paste it three times so we have three evenly spaced groups. Okay, so we can say, here's a group. I'm gonna call this group left. This is going to be a wireframe, and now you can see the point of a wireframe. We can see that this group is nested within another group because it's a darker color. Simply on the layouts, I'm going to set that as a row, and it's going to have no max width, no min width, and the height's going to be 80. So it's taking up the full space here. So now I can just say copy paste, uh, and then I'm going to rename this to center, and then copy paste, and rename that to right. Sweet, so now I can evenly space my text within the center. I can push text to the right-hand side and the buttons basically, log in, sign up. And on the left-hand side, the logo, I can just whack that on the left-hand side as well. So let's review. So first of all, we have this. Um, so what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna reference both of these because we are going to, actually, let's just do this first. Let's do the layout first. So we have a group here, okay, and that is, 48 by 48 fixed. So I'm going to grab a group. And this is called group logo. And this is, I'm going to remove this and just set it to the solid flat color. Now the color, what I should actually do is just grab it here. And I'm going to go into my styles, style variables, I'm going to change open sans to enter just while we're here, and then just change my primary to that blue color. That's the only color we're going to be using, setting this up. So back on group logo, I'm going to make it, so it's going to be aligned to parent because that aligns whatever is, whatever is inside this group, which is going to be the letter M for memo, the pretend brand, but I'm going to set fix, fixed 48 by 48, just like it's set up in Figma, and drop that in the center. Okay, now I can change this to my primary color, boom. And then what else can we do in Figma? Well, I'm just gonna zoom in and I'm gonna have another look at this element. So I have 12 pixels of corner radius. Let's set that up, roundness, 12. Done, let's move on to the next bit. Now we have memo, so memo, so I've used the wireframing method in Figma itself. This is just for demonstration purposes. I wouldn't normally do this. I would normally just have wireframing in bubble. Um, but anyway, I can see that this left-hand logo and memo are in a group. Here, the group is here, and that group has 10 pixels of um, gap spacing. In terms of memo, what do we have? Um, we have poppins, semi-bold, 20, perfect. So I'm gonna grab some text. And I'm going to detach the style, search for poppins. 600, 
20 and black basically. This is memo. Yep, that's memo. And I can put this in the center. No fixed width, but I am going to fit width to content because we're going to have an icon on the right hand side, the mobile hamburger icon, which we hide initially. No min height. And then we did have a, on this group, we have gap spacing of 10 on the column. Boom, done. Let's have another look. And there is another group here, but um, I may as well do this now. So I'm just going to grab an icon, drop it in, look for bars. There it is there. And I'm going to change my uh, primary to just black for iconography, just for the purposes of this demo. Now, bootstrap sizing for icons, 2424 24 or 4848. 48. Can you do other sizes? Yes, but then you're starting to drift from the bootstrap standards. I'm just going to remove the padding. Uh, it's in the style. So I've just detached the style. And I don't want any padding on an icon. There you go. Okay, perfect. So I want this group and memo in a group and I want this outside of that group. This will become clear shortly. So I'm going to place these two in a group, right click group elements in a row container. And then on the layout, I'm going to go grab my 10% 10 pixel column gap again. This is fine for now. Okay, let's move over. So we have group in the center, and that looks like it's inter, medium, and 16 with this fill color. Let's actually use this fill color, so ones across. Okay, so grab some text, drop it in, home. And for body, I'm going to change 16, medium, the rest is fine. Just on the style variables, I'm just going to use this black color so it's congruent with Figma. All right, so there's home, and then we have features and pricing. So home on the layout, I'm just going to remove fixed width, remove min width, choose fit width to content, remove the min height, and then put it in the center. This one will be called features. This one is called pricing. Okay, let's have a look at the layout. So we can put this in the center and then we can choose some gap spacing. How much gap spacing do we have here? So in the gap spacing, I can click on this group and I can see 40 pixels of gap spacing. All right, so just do the same. Here we go, column 40, boom, that's done. Right hand side, we have login and sign up. So login looks like it's the same styling as the other links and then sign up button, what do we have? So 48 pixels tall, this is bootstrap spacing. Okay, 48 pixels for buttons, inputs, that kind of thing, always 48. Sometimes you use 60, um, but you probably wouldn't mix and match within the same app. And then I have 20 pixels of horizontal padding either side, and I'll have fit width content on that as well. All right, so first I'm going to take home, copy paste. This is login. Okay, then I have a button, drop that in, and this is sign up. Right, let's set up the styling on the button. So Figma says it needs to be 16 and medium. Contrast for that, primary. Let's see the roundness on the button. We have eight pixels of roundness and that's all we need to know. So roundness is eight. No outset and on the layout we have 20 and 20. Top and bottom won't actually matter here because we're going to have a fixed height. So this would matter if it's a variable height. 
horizontally on the x-axis, it will always be variable because we're going to use fit width to content. So the content being the text, sign up. So you can see here it's a fixed width. So I'm going to remove that, remove that, and say fit width to content, which means we're always going to have 20 pixels of internal padding regardless of what we write in here. So the button will grow horizontally to fit width to content. Perfect. Drop that guy in the center. All right, and then let's have a look. So it's on the right-hand side, and we have 20 pixels of gap here. So let's do that. Gap 20 on the column, and we can put it on the right-hand side. Perfect. So this group, left-hand side on a row. This group, center on the row. This group, right on a row. Let's preview. Beautiful. So that was pretty pretty quick, guys. You could see just doing quick back and forth referencing Figma and just quickly rebuilding. Um, but now let's sort out some responsive stuff here. Now I'm just going to bring up the developer tools so we can have a play with responsive. So obviously we start running into problems here. We need a different design for responsive. And Figma says that if I go across, um, that it's going to be a hamburger icon on the right or these bars and then logo on the left, which means that this needs to drop away at a certain width, this needs to drop away. Okay, so first of all, this icon bars, we don't want that visible on page load and we're going to collapse the width when hidden. All right, so we only want to see that at mobile widths. Okay, so here's our starting point, perfect. So what I'd like to happen is this left-hand group, I want that to span edge to edge at a breakpoint of 992. Now, earlier on, I spoke about 12, 16, 24, 32, 48, 64, 72, 96, bootstrap spacing, padding, margins. Um, in terms of breakpoints, bootstrap says that the breakpoints are at 1400, 1200, 992, 768, 576, and it needs to be viewable at 320. Okay, if I head over to the responsive tab, I can actually see these numbers. Here's 1200, here's 992, here's 768. So in terms of consistency, in terms of having a process, in terms of building a system, this is what we do at BuildCamp. We adopt bootstrap standards. Everyone is in the, on the same boat. Everyone knows when stuff is going to um, be hidden, when stuff is going to hit 100% max width, when text is going to change from 56 down to 48 because we're going down to mobile sizes. Everyone knows that, we've learned the system. We always employ the system. We don't need to mess around. I very, very, very rarely look at the responsive editor because I just have a system and that's what we're going through today. Okay, so what we'll do is this. 992 is going to be the breakpoint. Why? Because when I hit 992, um, the design's starting to get a little bit cozy. So 768, we can't use because this happens. And yes, you know, there are solutions, reduce the gap in between. Nah, let's not do that. Let's just say at 991, so less than 992, let's hide this guy, hide this group on the right, and then let's show this hidden icon because now we can say that we are at tablet widths. Okay, so on the group right, I'm going to say that when the page width smaller than 992, then it's not going to be visible and check. On the layout tab, I'm going to make sure that collapse when hidden is checked because those two guys need to work in tandem. It means that this will fall away and the rest of the space will be divided between the left group and the center group. Okay, so if I bring this down, we can see that it drops away and now we've got 50, 50. But the same thing with this guy here. I don't want this to see this at nine below 992. So I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to say page width smaller than 992, then I don't want to see it and check. Okay, you can see the space has been left here because I need to collapse when hidden. Boom. Now, guys, now we have our mobile design. And now I can say to this icon bars, do the same thing. Page width smaller than 992, and that's when it goes edge to edge, that's when I do want to see it. Okay, so if I refresh, 
drop beneath 992, so that would be 992 is there, and I go one beneath, boom. There we go, guys. So we have our mobile responsive nav bar, all built in one. We don't need to build two different nav bars. And now within this repeating group, sorry, within the uh, reusable element floating group, that's where you would then build your pop-up or your side menu, however you want to handle your mobile navigation. We tend to just use pop-ups with a solid color. So it kind of looks like, you know, a pull-out sidebar or something like that. But I feel like pop-ups do the same job. Okay, so that takes care of that. So let's go back to our index page. And now let's do this next section. So I do know on the page that we have 96 pixels of um, gap. So I'm going to bring up my inspector. There it is there. On the layout, that is a column. And I'm going to apply gap spacing of 96. Okay. Now we need a group. So we have a max width, all these elements down the page, they all have a max width of 1200. Again, bootstrap sizing could be 1400 if you want. We just like building a slightly narrower width. So we constrain, we have a max width of 1200 on most content. There are times when you wouldn't have a max width. And let me just show you. So this blog piece could be horizontal scroll in which point it would start on the left and scroll all the way through to the right, you'd have no max width. So there's an example there. But anyway, let's focus on this group up here. If I go over to the uh, wireframe first, we can see that we have a 1200 group first of all, and then we're gonna divide it left and right. You can just see a small issue here, fill container. Guys, there will be Figma courses coming by the way. I just think it's such an integral part of building designs in Bubble Now. And it allows anyone, any sort of non-technical designer to collaborate with you. I even do this for my own stuff. When I build a course, I build it in Figma first, and then I go over to Bubble and, and rebuild. Yes, it takes a little bit more time, but no code saves us so much time anyway. Let's not try like, you know, how much time do you want to save? I guess we're going to get to a stage where it's like one click AI builds it for us. But for now, I like to be thoughtful with the design. It's very important. Okay, I'm gonna grab a group, boom, drop it on the page. This will be called group content, actually group hero. And it's gonna be a row because we're gonna divide it left, right. No fixed width, but we do have our 1200 max width, no min width, and the height I wanna work within is 576 for now. Ignore that, that's not important for now. I do want the content to be centered and I do want this group to be centered on the page. And I'd like a top margin of 80 so that this group starts beneath this nav bar. Okay, just a starting position. Okay, so I am, so yes, so in terms of the, this row gap doesn't matter because the floating group is not on the page, it's above the page. And this is on the page, but it's the first element on the page. <laughs> so I'm just going to remove this row gap, but I am going to add um, top padding of 96 and bottom padding of 96. Okay. Great. And let's just bring up our wireframe as well. Ah, we've lost lost our padding, 96, 96. All right, so the left-hand group. <clears throat> so we have use memo. So we're just gonna get the text into this group, okay? Um, so we're gonna put the group inside, uh, copy and paste it to the right-hand side, just use sort of a fill color here. And then we're just gonna start dropping elements in and then combining them. Okay, so what do we have? So we have, 32 pixels left and right, 64 top and bottom. So let's do that. So this is group here left. This is going to be column. And to begin with, I just want it edge to edge, no min width, and height 576, actually 640. No, 576 is fine, doesn't matter, just making some space to work within. 
and I want padding of 64 and 64 top and bottom, 32, 32 left, right. Okay, so this here are left, and I'm going to change this uh, wireframe. We'll just override this group. I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to copy and paste, and the right hand will be hero right. Okay, for now, I'm just going to make this block color, but this will be an image. That color, and uh, there we go there. Okay, so we have the text use memo. And then beneath that, copy paste, we have bring your team together nicely. And let's have a look at the styling for these two elements. So on use memo, we have enter semi bold 20 primary blue. So semi bold. 20 primary blue there we go and the text element which is different to the text i'm just going to fit with to the content so it's nice and snug okay bring your team together nicely let's have a look so heading one let me remind myself that, that is 56 and if we go deeper it is bold into 56. So I'm not using styles because um, this is just a short tutorial. So bold into 56. There we go. I'm going to use a 1.2 line spacing. No fixed width. No min width. No min height. And that is on the text element. Looking good. Okay. What else do we have? We have this lorem here. So I'm just going to copy. This lorem, it is intermedium 20. I'm gonna grab some text, drop it in, paste it in, detach the style, set that to 20, intermedium, yep, that's already selected. 1.4 is fine, okay? We want this guy to be edge to edge within this group, and there we have it. Next thing we need to do is these pieces here. But anyway, let's have a look at the grouping. So we have a group around use memo and bring a team together nicely. And that has a 16 on the row gap. And then we have a group with all of the elements with 24 on the gap. So I'm going to group these elements together. Group elements in a column container and then apply my row gap of 16. And fit height content, there's nothing else we need to do here. And then I'm going to take that group and this text, create that second column. So I can now set gap spacing of 24. Okay, this is just creating a little bit of hierarchy so that use memo and bring your team together nicely are closer together. And then this is slightly further apart. And we will, between this element and this group, we will have 48 pixels of row gap. So let's have a look at this. So we have an input that's going to be 48 pixels tall and I have a fixed width of 200. So input, there's my input. I'm gonna detach the style, set that to 16 and 500. And then I'm gonna set a background style of flat color so we can see it. And what did we do in the roundness? 10 pixels on the roundness. So you can see I'm just referencing in another tab. Figma also has an application you can download and then you can use um, command backspace just to toggle between back and forth, back and forth. Okay, um, and now this needs to say email address. I can, can see some, so we don't have a border. On the layout tab, 48 perfect. Fixed width with 200 according to the design. Padding, I'm going to use 20 and 20. So it's the same as the basically the button up here. Top and bottom doesn't matter because I'm using a fixed height. And I'm going to say email address 
in here and placeholder. I'm going to make that a bit darker. I'm going to make the 75 for the placeholder. Okay. And the button next to it, get started. That's all we need to know really. So we can take our button and just use our style. So get started. Set that, move away from fixed width because we want even 20 pixels of left, right padding. But the rest is fine. And now we can group these two together in a group, in a row, of course. And I want to switch these around. So this guy here, he's currently 45. I'm going to set him to 48 and just make last. And then within this group, I'm going to apply some spacing on the column of 16. Okay, and then within this group, the parent group, which is group hero left, that will now have 48 row gap. So you can see the hierarchy. So we'll go 48 to 24, and then within this, we go to 16. Okay, now uh, we can see the height here. Uh, what I'm gonna do is just remove the min height, let this come up a little bit, and on group hero, I'm going to remove the min height as well. Well, that's being constrained by this group here. So in terms of this group, uh, what I'm gonna do is just upload that image. So I'm going to change, um, so I'm going to make this group style none, and I'm going to remove the padding. And I'm going to grab an image element and just drop it in that group. Okay. Now I'm going to upload that image. All right, there it is there. Now I just wanted to span edge to edge, but I do want a fixed ratio. Now this image wasn't exactly one to one when I edited it. It was, I think, 700 by 640. So I can just set an aspect ratio of 70 by 64 because it's just a ratio and that will give me exactly what I need. Okay, I can see there's some space in the group here, so I'm going to remove the min height. All right, vertical alignment in the center. And because we have an as aspect ratio set, um, it's going to scale down nicely. All right, don't care about the min width. So let's just see where we're at with this. Okay, fantastic, a bit more work to be done. So the group behind this, I'm just going to select first parent, go over to the layout tab and just vertically align in the center. So that is the group uh, right hand, so group hero right because I saw as I was scaling down, it was moving up and not staying in the center. So now it's staying in the center. Let's sort out responsive. Um, let's say that we want a breakpoint of 992. Beneath 992, there's 992 there. One beneath, so when we get to 991, I want this group to drop beneath uh, this left-hand group. So it's currently at 991. So we can do a few things here. We can set a min width uh, of this guy, uh, which is half of 992. And that would be 496. So I can say at 496, that's the min width. Um, well, I would need 496 here as well. So select first parent. So both groups need 496. So now when I refresh, it's gonna break, okay? because 991 is less than 496 times two, which is 992. So then I'm back at 992, and then one pixel beneath, and there we go, it breaks, okay? Or we can do another thing, so we can remove the min width here. I can go to the group, select first parent. I know there's a keyboard shortcut, but I'm just sort of st stuck in my old ways. Um, what we can also say is we can use a conditional that says when the page width is smaller than 992, then set the min width to a percentage, which is a 
100% of the parent container, which is this group hero. All right, so same thing. We go to 992 and then one beneath and it achieves the same outcome. So we go down to 375 mobile and let's just have a look. So there's some funky stuff happening here. Um, so let's let's fix fix this up basically. Okay, so other things we would do on mobile, okay, if we just, um, let's go to 375, come down, is we change the left-right padding from 32 to 32 down to 16, 16, just bootstrap standard sizing, do that to this group as well. We also change this to 64 instead of 96, the top and bottom padding. So let's do that. Let's jump into the nav bar. And on the group inner, which currently has 32 pixels left, right padding, let's change it to be that when the current page width smaller than 992, then padding left is 16, padding right is 16. Okay, that solves that. I'm just gonna copy this expression jump back into the index and just paste this expression because now I want top padding to be 64 and bottom padding to be 64. And then in this group here, which also has 32 left right, I'm going to change padding left, padding right, both 16 and 16. Okay, much better, more sort of edge to edge. Next thing we're gonna do is this text here, we are going to say that when the current page width is smaller than 992, we're gonna change the font size from 56 just down to 48, we're just gonna nudge it down because on a mobile phone, it's just too large and we can see that is much better. So we can do that, well, I actually wouldn't do it to the other text, that's absolutely fine. So let's work on these pieces here, this input uh, and this button. So the first thing I'm gonna do is on the layout tab, I can see that we need some row gap of 16 because they were touching when they it broke to a new line. So that would apply space in between when it breaks. The other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to just remove these conditions and I'm going to paste the other 992 condition. I'm going to say min width or width needs to be 100%. So below 992 is going to span edge to edge because it's stacking. It looks better that way. And I'm going to do the same to this button. I'm going to say the width, min width, is 100%. That's how it should be. You want edge to edge on a mobile phone with buttons and inputs. Uh, yeah, edge to edge, much better. See that? Perfect. Um, last thing is this image seems to be disappearing. I'm wondering why. So this goes, let's so bring this up a bit. And I'm two there somewhere. Select first parent. Very quickly, I'm going to change the steer to this group. So the wireframe, I'm just going to remove any color. I'm going to rename it to um, so we've got standard transparent. So that's at the end of a build or at the end of a page. I tend to do that. So we, <laughs> how nice is that? Um, we can't see that email address. So I'm just going to change that to like a gray color. Across here. That is called placeholder in Figma. And I can go and see what the hex is. There it is there. So I can change it here. 
gray color. And I want the M in here as well. Let's just finish this off. So we had a line to parent in this group and we just want a big M in here. So there we go. I'm going to center it, make it a bit bigger. So let's make it 24 so we can see it. And our white color contrast. And then on the layout, we can just choose center because it's aligned to parent. So I just want that boom in the center like that. Let's have another look. Fantastic. Down to 320 still works all fine, but that image has been lost. and <laughs> I don't really know why. Uh, let's have one quick look. So visible and page load, yes. Select first parent. Element is visible and page load. I'm just going to change this back to instead of um, this min width being 100%, I'm just going to use my min width here, 496. So that's to um, that's a responsive breakpoint at 992. So that's half of that is 496. And just click back into the group underneath this and set this to 496 as well. And yeah, now it will. Yeah, now it breaks, but we can see that we have an issue here with horizontal scroll, and that's because the size of this image. So we break in at 496, um, so that we're setting that as a min width to get the breakpoint 992, perfect. But we need something that breaks down to 375 and even down to 320, because the current min width is currently 496. So I'm going to use a conditional on each of these groups. So this conditional will say when the page width is smaller than, and on this, this time I'm going to say uh, 576, because it needs to be higher than the min width here, which is 496. Then just make the uh, min width 320. Okay, and then I'm going to copy and paste this. I'll come back to you again in a second and explain. So when the current page width is smaller than 576, just make the min width 320. And that should now resolve this issue we had here. And it does. So that's 320. I've got a bit of space up here I want to remove as well. So actually, I'm going to say when the page width is smaller than 992, top padding, I'm actually going to bring this down to 32 just to remove some top uh, space here. Yeah, that's much better. This is perfect, guys, look at this. Okay, so this is what I meant. So let's just talk through this. We're at 1024. So this is the size that we built at. Um, and then we went to 992, 992. Perfect, and then one pixel beneath 992 is when we wanted to take this group um, and then take this right-hand group and we want them to break. So this image beneath this left-hand group. So that's what we did with those min widths of, of uh, 496. Because 496 on the left plus 496 on the right, both min widths. Now we've got 992. Anything beneath that, something has to give, okay? But then we did set it, but then we did set it to 496, which means we can never get beneath 496 because that is the min width that is filling up the whole row. So we needed a second conditional to then say, okay, so at 992, you've broken, we've hit the bootstrap standard breakpoint, but now we need to break again and change the min width again uh, below 576. I didn't start with setting a min width at 320 because then it would only break at 640. 320 and 320 is 640. By then, the design is too squishy, okay? 
So that's why we employed that particular technique. So we go down to 991, there we go. And now we can go all the way down to uh, 375 is kind of the mobile size I, I tend to work with. And now we have 16 pixels on the left, um, 16 pixels down here. We have these buttons and elements full width, which is min width 100%, and we have the image beneath it, okay? And then up here, we've obviously got 32, 32. This is all in the same row. All right, guys, so that's that's how I do it. I reference Figma, uh, I look at the sizing, um, I look at the style sheet a lot, of, a lot of the time, actually work with the style first within Figma, rebuild it in Bubble, and then it's just quickly referencing back and forth. And because there is a design system, you will be on your way very quickly when you learn the design system. Where can you learn this system? You can learn it at FlexCamp, link is below. Six week course, you'll come out an absolute bubble design master after that and you'll get exposure to working with Figma files and you will also be submitting a project where you work on your own with a Figma file to rebuild both a dashboard and a landing page, both super detailed within bubble on your own. I hope you enjoyed today.